Sony's biggest game before the November release of Crash Bandicoot Warped is Spyro the Dragon. You've no doubt seen the ads all over TV. While Spyro is a solid B game, it won't send Crash running for his money. Control is very important in a 3D game. Spyro's control feels a tad loose. We're not being picky, but we do have to say that this is only a minor flaw. The dual shock controller really vibrates in this game, a nice peripheral feature, but that's nowhere near as noteworthy as the gems in the game. In most games, you have to bust open crates or creatures to expose gems or items, but half the time you're going so fast that you miss the gem while busting through things. In Spyro, the gem draws to you once it's exposed, so there's none of this circling back business for every stupid gem. This incredibly small touch shows a real concentration on maximizing the gameplay experience. Another example of this commitment to quality are the two options for camera movement, active and passive. Active is the best choice to keep the action centered. Spyro the Dragon is well done overall. The only real drawback is that we've seen all this before, but we haven't seen Crash Bandicoot warped. That problem is solved by pressing L1 and triangle on the title screen. You'll access a playable sneak peek at Crash's upcoming adventure. Crash, what do you suppose happened to Cortex? And what about the Cortex Vortex? It's still up there.